Hello and welcome to a new week of meals. I'm taking some tofu here to start off. Our friends came over the night before and brought a container of fresh made tofu for us. And so I'm going to make the copycat Panda Express tofu eggplant, eggplant tofu, but without the eggplant because I don't have any. So I'm basically going to just use the tofu. This is the sauce I am mixing up, starting off with some soy sauce. We've got some sweet chili sauce, some rice vinegar, sriracha, sesame oil, and oyster sauce. I'm just kind of winging this. I do have a video where I made the original copycat recipe, and I'll link that in the cards above uh, and or down below. Uh, so I'm starting off here with the sweet chili sauce use as much of this as you like. I'm going to make a large batch of the sauce since I have quite a bit of tofu and I'm using some soy sauce. This is all the soy sauce I have left. It's probably about a quarter cup or so. You're going to do all of this to taste. I don't really measure the sauces and then I'm going to add about oh a teaspoon or so of sesame oil and then this is the rice vinegar. I believe I'm using seasoned rice vinegar, a bit of oyster sauce, and then I'm gonna go in with as much sriracha as you like. I liked it a little bit spicy. Gonna mix that and whisk it all together, and then I'm going to add the tofu. Here is the tofu. Some of it is just plain and then the others with the little black bits have little bits of mushroom in it. I'd never had that before, but it was delicious. So I'm just actually, I've cubed them up into smaller little bits uh, just to, well, to make it a little bit easier to eat and then also to help soak up the sauce a little bit. So I'm just gonna toss that in the sauce that I made. Um, you know, I had tasted it right before just to make sure it's the way I like it. I'm gonna toss this, make sure they're all evenly coated and then I'm just gonna fry them up, kind of heat them up and let the sauce reduce a little bit in the pan. a little bit of olive oil at the bottom here just to heat up so it doesn't stick so much. Once the oil is heated up, I'm going to add the tofu and all of the sauce. Again, I'm gonna let the sauce reduce a little bit, just kind of coat it a little bit, make it a little bit stickier. You know, it's got a lot of sugar with that sweet chili sauce or I don't know if it's sugar or corn so I don't know what they use in it, but uh, it will reduce and it will thicken up a little bit to coat the tofu a little bit better. And that is pretty much the tofu done. Is the finished dinner. There is the tofu with that sweet and uh, spicy sauce. Served it with some cauliflower rice mixed with some frozen green beans just to even it out a bit. I didn't make regular rice. Um, Colin had his little instant cups if he wanted it, but I just did cauliflower rice for me and Rob. And the following night, <laughs> super, super easy. I was extremely lazy. So I had cooked up a pork loin the week before, just sliced that up and then I added just ramen and some frozen peas and carrots and called it a night. And that was the next night of the week. Jumping to Friday, this is Good Friday, meatless meal, so I'm just gonna make like a pasta bake. You saw I had rigatoni there. I am boiling that on the stove and in the meantime, I'm mixing together this uh, cottage cheese. So in lieu of ricotta, which I don't have, I had a bit of cottage cheese left. So that's about half of that large container. I added some shredded Parmesan cheese from a block of parm that I had in the fridge I hadn't used, adding some freshly cracked black pepper and a little bit of garlic powder, just mixing that up. Uh, and then I, that is gonna be a layer of uh, cheese in the middle of this pasta bake. So just make sure it's nicely and thoroughly mixed together so I have all of the seasonings and the cheeses, uh, cheese mixed in to the cottage cheese. Once the pasta is done and al dente, I'm just gonna drain it and add the defrosted diced tomatoes that I had in the, from the freezer. So I'm just gonna dump that in there. You can blend it, you can use tomato sauce, uh, you can use crushed tomatoes, but this is what I happen to have. And then I'm also going to just mix that together and season this up. So I'm gonna add a bit of garlic powder and um, what else? Onion powder, I believe, 
and then I'm also going to add a little squirt of ketchup and some Italian seasoning. There's the Italian seasoning here. I'm going to mix that together now. You can tell it's not really much of a sauce, so I wanted to see if I had some tomato sauce, uh, but I didn't. So <laughs> I found a can of tomato soup, and this actually worked really, really well. I kind of like my pastas with a little bit of sweetness, and because the tomato soup has a bit of that, uh, it ended up being the perfect addition to this. So I may actually make this a thing to add a can of tomato soup, but um, and there's Rob, <laughs> he's home from work. So I'm just gonna mix this up together, and that is pretty much the uh, pasta layer finished. And I'm just gonna layer this now in the baking dish with the cheese, I'm gonna add some mozzarella as well, and it will all come together. To my baking dish that I have not greased. You can grease it if you want, but it didn't really stick or anything since it was a pretty saucy sauce. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take half of the pasta with tomato, and then I'm going to layer the cottage cheese with the parm. I'm gonna spread that evenly so it's nice and, uh, well, evenly spread <laughs> over the pasta. And then I'm gonna top that with some bits of mozzarella cheese. I had uh, another log of mozzarella cheese that I had in the freezer that I had defrosted. And then I'm gonna do the rest of the pasta and more mozzarella cheese and that'll be ready to go into the oven. This obviously would be great with meat if you wanted to add and make it a meat sauce instead of just plain tomato. Um, and then you can also even add some spinach to the cheese mixture in the middle, uh, kind of lasagna style. But in any case, this is gonna go into the oven at 350 until everything is nice warmed through and the mozzarella is melted. I did turn the broiler on for a bit just to brown up the cheese and there you go. I did make some garlic bread. I had some, um, you know, just some old sourdough. I topped with uh, some melted butter, some minced garlic, some Italian seasoning and garlic salt, I believe. And there you go, that is the dinner for Friday, topped with a bit of parsley just to make it look pretty. <laughs> and that was our Friday night dinner, a meatless meal. And lastly, I wanted to share with you the ham that I cooked for Easter Sunday. Now, I normally don't share my Sunday meals because we're, you know, either doing leftovers or we eat out or something like that. But this was a special meal, so I decided to go ahead and record the ham. I am using the recipe that I got off of Food Network several years ago. I've been doing this for, I don't know, like... I don't know, 10 years or something like that. Um, but it is a Tyler Florence recipe. So it's basically, I'm just making the glaze here. I've got a whole stick of butter. I don't even measure anymore. A whole stick of butter. I put in some brown sugar. You see it there that I had cut up some cuties, so tangerines. This uses tangerine juice instead of like a pineapple or something like that. And then the last uh, ingredient that you're gonna need, and you'll see towards the end, is some sage, fresh sage. So I'm taking the uh, brown sugar just kind of squishing it up and I'm trying to dissolve this so you really want the brown sugar to dissolve and then I'm just gonna squeeze the tangerine juice in there I'm gonna kind of taste it uh, make sure it's got a nice balance of that sweet tart tangerine juice with this with the real sweetness of the brown sugar it is just such a really simple glaze to make that I just it's our go-to and it's I do it every single year so I'm just gonna cook that up and squeeze the tangerine juice in. brown sugar heats up and then you've got the tangerine juice in there it's gonna start to foam up so you need to really watch the heat if it starts to like kind of 
boil over a bit, uh, you want to turn the heat down because you don't want that to happen. I, add a, I ended up adding some more brown sugar just to uh, make more of this glaze, kind of help it thicken up a little bit, and then just to balance everything out. So I kind of like doubled, doubled what I did in, in the beginning. Uh, so I've got the brown sugar, I do add more tangerine juice, and then I'm gonna kind of let that reduce a little bit, thicken up a little bit. I'm gonna test it by, you know, putting a few drops onto a plate, letting that cool, uh, see if it's thick enough, and then also see if it's got enough of that tangerine flavor that I really like. So here you see me just put in a few drops here. I'm gonna let that cool before I touch it because you know the sugar is very, very hot. So you see it's not running. It's uh, as soon as it cools, it really, really thickens up a bit to more of a glaze. So just tasting that there. Once I'm happy with it, I'm gonna, again, let it just thicken up a bit more to a glaze. And then I'm gonna add that last ingredient, the one that really just ties it all together with the sweet and the savory. I'm gonna add the sage leaves. So I'm gonna add that just a little bit. And I do this at the very end because when I first started doing this recipe, I used to put it towards the beginning and kind of let it boil with the brown sugar and the tangerine juice and the butter, but I noticed it got a bit too, um, well, a little bitter, and I didn't like that, so I have been turning the heat off, and you know, once it's thickened to the way I like it, and it, you know, tangerine flavor is where I want it to be, I turn the heat off, and then I add the sage leaves to just kind of sit in the residual heat of the glaze. So I'll do that in just a little bit and then we're gonna set it aside to cool while the ham cooks. So we've got our almost 10 pound ham here. I rinse it off, um, just towel, paper towel it dry so it's not too wet. The one thing I forgot, completely forgot to do was score the ham. So that's why you don't see me do that. I'll do it a little bit later. You'll see me doing it very precariously <laughs> on the hot ham out of the oven. But here you go. The other thing was I completely ran out of foil. So I like MacGyvered this with some parchment paper in the middle. I actually took the last bit of foil that I had and then I stole the foil from the leftover pasta bake <laughs> from the fridge and I'm using it here for the oven. Other end of, <laughs> of my roasting pan so whatever this is a fully cooked ham fully cooked smoked ham that I got from the store so I'm not worried about it needing to cook uh, you know it, it's cooked so um, there you go you see as I pull the foil and the parchment off I'm thinking oh my gosh I forgot to score the ham so here I go with uh, my knife trying to score it here while it's hot from the oven <laughs> very precarious as I as I said so I don't know well I the reason you do this is uh, well to make it look pretty and then also it helps with the glaze you know just kind of soak it not soak in but kind of getting all the crevices there and just mixing with the fat of the ham it just it's it's delicious so I am doing that here and you see me spreading the glaze now that is cooled. You can see it's slightly thickened, but you know, as it hits the hot ham, it's obviously gonna start melting again, but it's getting in all those little crevices that I had just cut into the ham. And then this is gonna go into the oven um, for another half hour or so. You know, you wanna cook or warm up really. You wanna warm up the ham according to the instructions for the ham. Um, this is a Farmer John one. It said 325, 15 minutes for every pound. Okay, so that's exactly what I did. I did actually do it a little bit shy of what it needed to be because I don't like it to be too dry. And as I mentioned, it is already fully cooked. So there you go. Not wasting any of that glaze, scraping it into all those little cuts that I made into the meat. Gonna go back into the oven uncovered for another half hour 
and then that'll be pretty much ready to serve. The other thing I didn't do was I usually put slices of tangerine, like pretty slices, but that is me mainly just for aesthetics. Uh, it doesn't really affect the flavor so much. So I omitted that this time. I just want to do the glaze that I get to my mom's for Easter lunch. But there you go, out of the oven. It's not as brown as it normally is, but it was fine actually. It was nice and juicy, it wasn't salty. That nice, sweet, tangy flavor, and then also the savory with the sage. But this was our Easter lunch spread. Um, we had some Chinese takeout there, some Peking duck with some bao. There's my ham in the background. Uh, my mom made some asparagus. We had some chow mein here, like fried noodles. Uh, she also made this fish here that she um, kind of steamed. We've got deviled eggs, and then my mother-in-law made some fried rice. So that was the spread there. It was so delicious. It was an actually a nice change. We had some different things this year, so that was, that was very, very nice. And then for dessert, we had some chocolate-covered strawberries that were dipped to look like little carrots so I thought that was cute hope you guys enjoyed our meals for this week and I hope you enjoyed a little peek into our Easter hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will see you in the next video take care until then bye bye